As we speak, um, in September 2011, we have some 12 million people who are um, in a very difficult situation, uh, hungry in the Corn of Africa. Um, about 800,000 who are facing the immediate risk of starvation. And out of these 12 million people, some 2.8 million are blocked in southern Somalia, which is in the hands of local militant uh, Islamist groups, uh, the Al-Shabaab, who basically make it extremely difficult and sometimes impossible for food aid to reach these populations. We also have some 700, 800,000 people who are displaced, are in refugee camps, uh, which are completely overcrowded and where the humanitarian agencies in charge um, are not sufficiently uh, able to provide um, support to all the people arriving. Uh, people who often have traveled for weeks um, and uh, loss, lives have been lost in the, in the way in order to reach uh, aid which could not be received in the places where they, were, they, they found themselves. That is the situation. What is very frustrating in such a situation is that all those following this issue knew already in January, February 2011, nine months ago, that this would happen. There were warning signals. We knew that there had been droughts, that the, 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 the prospects were that the rains would be very poor. We knew that the harvests would not be sufficient and that as a result, the cattle on which these populations for the most part depend would die in large numbers. We've alerted the international community, nothing has happened. And basically nothing happens in this world until the situation degrades so much that it becomes a huge humanitarian emergency, a disaster, and that famine is officially declared. And famine means that at least 20% of the population must be starving, essentially. We should not be obliged to wait for this moment before we come to support the producers, to support the communities, um, to build their resilience vis-à-vis -vis these climatic events, which of course are the, are the result of nature, natural phenomena, but which are man-made in their consequences because they were avoidable. So we should plan in advance because these droughts shall in the future be more frequent, more severe as a result of climate change, and we know what to do to anticipate the consequences. We need to build agricultural systems that are more resilient to climate change. For example, um, landscapes that better capture the moisture in the soils uh, and, and better capture the, the the, the, the water from rainfall, build cisterns, reservoirs that can keep the, 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 the rainfall uh, water um, and use it for irrigation purposes uh, later in the year. We need um, to have an instrument, the Food Aid Convention, that is now under reform, obliging the international community to intervene in cases where needs are being assessed. And we need to build in these regions food reserves that allow international agencies, particularly the World Food Programme, to come at the rescue of populations without having to buy the food on the markets. It's a bit like now they were hiring the firefighters to, to fight the fire, and the, the fire is out, right? We should, we should be much better equipped. And the World Food Programme, for example, should be able to draw on existing food reserves uh, in order to feed these populations. Um, it is not normal that it has to wait weeks and months for the donor community to mobilize itself to have enough funds to come at the rescue of these populations.